Welcome to Metahead Christian Fellowship and our online live streamed service. Before we get started, there are a couple of things that we'd like you to know about. If you're accessing this on a Sunday morning between 10 and 11.30, you can take part in a very real way through our live chat option. This allows you to contribute and to communicate with others who are watching the service during the time that we are online. You can also put your prayer requests up, preferably early on in the service, and at the end we'll gather them all up and before we close someone will take time to pray specifically for those needs. Remember just a first name will do and a brief description, there's no need for, for detail, just to protect people's privacy. God knows all the details. You may have personal needs that you don't feel able or that you want to share on the live chat. That's not a problem at all because we have that covered. There is a prayer request button which will link you to one of our prayer team who you can share your request with and they will pray with you one to one confidentially and nobody else will be able to see that or to take part in that. If you're accessing this service at any other time through the internet, we have that covered too. Please send your request to office at mcfchurch.co.uk or just ask for someone to contact you. If you leave your contact details, then someone certainly will get in touch. With all that taken care of, let's enjoy all that God has for us today. He has something here for you. Welcome to MCF. Good morning, everybody. Great, great to see you this morning. Uh, it just struck me watching that, actually. If you're a visitor or have started coming in the last few weeks, you're probably wondering, why do we wait for that video to play and then start the service? So it's just because we're synchronising it with an online transmission at the same time, so everybody watching uh, at home can actually uh, we all start together. So we're going to start this morning with a reading again. We're going to read from the Psalms. So I just want to know before we do this, Anybody stay up to see Great Britain win their only gold medal of the Games? Whoa, oh, really? Did you, Izzy? Wow. And you're still awake. That's very impressive. All right, so we're going to read uh, Psalm 34, the first eight verses. If you'd like to stand, please. Uh, and we'll read this. If you're watching at home, if you want to find in your Bible Psalm 34, that'd be great. And read along with us. So, in my Bible... Just before the first verse, it says of David, when he pretended to be insane before Abimelech, who drove him away and he left. So I don't know if anybody's pretended to be insane this week, or genuinely been insane, but this is a psalm for us this morning. All right, the first eight verses. I will extol the Lord at all times. His praise will always be on my lips. My soul will boast in the Lord. Let the afflicted hear and rejoice. Glorify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord and he answered me. He delivered me from all my fears. 
Those who look to him are radiant. Their faces are never covered with shame. This poor man called, and the Lord heard him. He saved him out of all his troubles. The angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear him, and he delivers them. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man who takes refuge in him. Let's just pray a minute. Lord, we want to uh, just want to claim that last verse for us today, Lord. We want a taste of you this morning. We want a taste of you today and see that you are good. Lord, we just come before you. We want to worship you. We want to honour you, Jesus. And I pray as we do, Lord, that this would be a two-way thing, that we would love you and worship you and we'd hear you speaking to us, Lord, and respond to you. Jesus, we adore you. Amen. Amen. Chris. Thank you for the cross, Lord. Thank you for the price you Bearing all my sin and shame, in love you came and gave amazing grace. Thank you for this love, Lord. Thank you for the nail-pierced hands. Wash me in your cleansing flow. Now all I know, your forgiveness and embrace. Worthy is the Lamb, seated on the throne. We crown you now with many crowns, you reign victorious. heaven crucified worthy is the Lamb worthy is the Lamb I sing thank you thank you for the cross Lord Thank you for the price you paid Bearing all my sin and shame In love you came And gave amazing grace Thank you for this love, Lord Thank you for the nail-pierced hand Wash me in your cleansing flow Now all I know Your forgiveness and embrace Worthy is the Lamb Seated on the throne We crown you now with many crowns Reign victorious, high and lifted up, Jesus, Son of God, the darling of heaven, crucified, worthy is the Lamb. Worthy is the Lamb Worthy is the Lamb Worthy is the
blessed be your name in the land that is plentiful where the streams of abundance flow blessed be your name blessed be your name when I found in the desert place Though I walk through the wilderness Blessed be your name And every blessing you pour out I'll, I'll turn back to praise And when the darkness closes in, Lord Still I will say, Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your glorious name. Blessed be your name. When the sun's shining down on me When the world's all as it should be Blessed be your name Blessed be your name On the road marked by suffering Though there's pain in the offering Blessed be your name And every blessing you pour out I'll, I'll turn back to praise And when the darkness closes in Lord, still I will say Blessed be the name of the Lord Blessed be your name Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your glorious name. Yeah, blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your glorious name. Give and take away. You give and take away. My heart will choose to say, Lord, blessed be your name. You give and take. You give and take away. You give and take away. My heart will choose to say, Lord, blessed be your name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your glorious name. Yeah, blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your glorious name. Blessed be, blessed be your name. Blessed be your name. Blessed be your name. Father, Father, Jesus, Jesus, thank you, Lord. Blessed be your name. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, your perfect love is casting out fear. 
And even when I'm caught in the middle of the storms of this life, I won't turn back, I know you are near. And I will fear no evil, for my God is with me. And if my God is with me, whom then shall I fear? Whom then shall I fear? go through the calm and through the storm oh no you never let go in every high and every low oh no you never let go lord you never let go of me and i can see a light that is coming for the heart that holds on Glorious light beyond all compare There will be an end to these troubles But until that day comes I'll live to know you here on the earth And I will fear no evil For my God is with me and if my God is with me, then whom shall I fear? Whom then shall I fear? Oh no, you never let go through the calm and through the storm. Oh no, you never let go in every high and every low. Oh no, you never let go, Lord, you never let go of me. Yes, I can see a light that is coming for the heart that holds on. There will be an end to the troubles, but until that day comes, still I will praise you. Still I will praise you. Yes, I can see a light that is coming for the heart that holds on. There will be an end to these troubles, but until that day comes, still I will praise you. Still I will praise you. Oh no, you never let go through the calm and through the storm. Oh no, you never let go in every high and every low. Oh no, you never let go. Lord, you never let go of me. Lord, we thank you this morning. Your hand on our lives. Lord, whatever storms, whatever highs, whatever lows each of us is going through right now, Lord. We look out in the world today, Lord, and we see troubles. Lord, but we know you have your hand on this world, Father. And we have a hope, and we just say thank you for that. Amen. 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 If you'd like to sit down, please. It's great. A few, a few things uh, just to run through by way of notices, trying to keep people informed. The uh, first thing is there's a great bit of news. So when we do the monthly offerings that go to work overseas, it's always great to, to hear back uh, you know, how much has been raised and what that money is, is going to go for. And we, heard, we saw last week the video from Roy and Jenny Ramble in Roop Idea, uh, and we took up the offering. And really great to say that we raised over £1,300 uh, to, to go out to them, you know, and that's going to be a big help for them. Yeah, thank you, God, just for releasing funds. Yeah. And, we, and we just praise God for that. Uh, the Sunday at four service, which I now see it seems to be called, is guess what? Very good. <laughs> on Sunday as well. Even better. And it's here. All right. So with Catherine and the family leading that. If, if you're going to that, then yes, that is on today. So please do come. Uh, there's a real prayer meeting tonight. 
uh, in unit two with real people really facing each other and not on WhatsApp. So that's at seven o'clock. Yeah. Yes, seven o'clock in unit two this evening. All right. Um, St I've got a note of Stephen Ross here. You, are you saying something? or Because that's all I've got is Stephen Ross. <laughs> it's Ross. Come on. Come on up. <laughs> for Batemore Park. It had to be cancelled because, or postponed, I should say, because of an outbreak of COVID with the speaker. So people uh, said they were really sorry to hear that, but actually God's timing was so perfect, but that's another story which would take up a bit of time. But God's timing is always perfect, isn't it? So we're rescheduled for this coming Thursday at 7... Wednesday, oh please get that right, <laughs> sorry, recoming, there's so many things happening this week, Wednesday the 23rd of February, 7 o'clock, and it's in the community um, rooms, which are opposite unit 2, okay, got that right, okay, <laughs> right, okay, so the request is, we've got a really, really good speaker coming, uh, called David Addenbrook, and he's going to tell you exactly what's going to be happening on Batemore Park. So it'll be 7 o'clock to 8 o'clock. You don't need to stop for the business bit of the AGM, just for the speaker, because it would be good if you all could support us and uh, see what is going to be happening in Batemore Park. It's really exciting, because you know so many things are happening. That's why I'm a bit puddled. OK? So you can stop for the business bit if you want, but I don't expect you will. So yeah, OK. That makes sense. That's great. <laughs> Did that make sense? Yeah. Great. Uh, I mean, just to underline that, the work we do in the local community is so key, right? Because one of the values is about transforming communities. That doesn't make any sense until we start rolling up our sleeves and, uh, and getting involved and doing things. And so the work Ros and Steve are really doing here is pioneering. You know, you've heard them talk about how they're way out of their comfort zone. <laughs> they're doing this. Uh, and, you know, if you can get behind them, it's just so brilliant, all right? Because it, it can sound incredibly ordinary and mundane. But behind the scenes, you know, we're in faith that God is at work here. Uh, and, and God is way more interested in the community here than, uh, than we can ask or imagine. And I think where we're able to get involved, that's great. Do I need to turn this microphone off? No, carry on. Okay, thank you. A uh, couple of other things, though, please. Uh, there is a men's curry night on March the 7th. This is your last reminder. Five pounds needs to be into James Hope Gill by next Sunday. Wave in the corner, James, for anybody who doesn't know him. There he is. So five pounds. For, and, and there's only a few places left. Does that milk it enough? Is that all right? Uh, okay. There's only a few places left, all right? So, so a great night out for the, for the, for the lads. Uh, Monday, March the 7th. Got the Kashmiri aroma. Uh, if you can get five pounds to James, you can be in on it. It'd be great. Uh, next thing, such a random selection of notices this morning. Okay. But the next thing is we have these um, Bible project sheets that Catherine's produced for us across the whole book of Romans. Okay, so it's kind of, um, it's actually on one page, it's everything you ever wanted to know about the book of Romans, almost. All right, so if you want to take one of these, these are available here from the front, and uh, if we need any more, we can print them off. There's some further links on the actual sheet to the website and the YouTube videos about it to get more information, but these are available free. Please do take one, because along with the journals, I think people will find these really helpful to kind of get a bit of an understanding sometimes about what Nick's going to be talking about this morning. <laughs> <laughs> if you don't know what he's talking about, you can always colour it in. Right. Uh, I've got uh, at least one more, I think. Yes, uh, and so a reminder, there is the Lily's Clothing Bank event on Saturday the 26th of March, February. <laughs> Just lost the month, sorry. <laughs> on Saturday the 26th of March, here, February. Come on. Okay, Re rewind. <laughs> next Saturday. Yeah, next Saturday, there is a clothing bank event here in this building. Andrew would dearly love it if there's a couple more people who could possibly help between sort of half nine, half eleven kind of time. That would be a really big help 
Do you want to get, if you've looked in the room and seen the... <laughs> Just as lilies. So half nine and twelve. Half nine to half twelve. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Next Saturday. Half nine to half twelve, okay? Clothing bag. If you've seen in the room in the back here, it's absolutely jam-packed. You can't get in the room because of clothes. And they're all going to be out here. Uh, and we put adverts out around the local community, on the relevant Facebook groups and all that. So we're hoping that a lot of people are going to come. But we really need some helpers between half nine and half twelve next Saturday. <laughs> is that it? I think that is it. Uh, just let me check. Yeah, that is it. So, Pete, uh, family slot. I am going to need some volunteers, okay? But you do need to remember volunteers, and parents especially, that if your child volunteers, that that camera is turned on and they will be on the stream on the internet. So if you're not happy with that, then please don't let your child volunteer. Sorry, children, but uh, I just need to cover, uh, cover myself with that. And I'm just going to move you out of the way. There. So, uh, as I say, I do need some volunteers. Um, in total, I need three volunteers. Um, but I, I'm going to go for just one to start off with, okay? Uh, and I need somebody who's quite, well, not too tall, but sort of the taller end of child, if that makes sense. So, uh, come on then, Lizzie. Come and stand just here for me, please. Uh, okay? Uh, so, what I need you to do... Look, he's putting his bits of paper all over my stuff as well. <laughs> I need you to hold that stick out in front of you. I would hold it with both hands if I were you, just to... Okay, and then... I'm going to take these two up. Now, I need a volunteer, one of my other volunteers. Um, come on then, out you come. I need you just to hold that rope a minute, and I want you to pull at it and tug at it and make sure that it's not going to snap. Tug it, make sure. And my other volunteer, my third volunteer. Come on, then. You can come and stand this side, and you can uh, pull and tug at that one just to make sure that that's not going to snap. Just make sure it's not going to snap. Give it a pull. Pull it. Yeah, you're happy. Come this way a bit. So that, there, there we go. Are you happy that's not going to snap? No. You're not happy it's not going to snap? I'll tell you what, you hold that end then. I'll hold this end. Pull. 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 Is it going to snap? Nah, it's not going to snap. There we go. So, we're going to place this rope a bit. over the top of there. I've got to remember that I need to keep using this microphone. Problem is, are you happy that's not going to snap? Yeah. That, that's the right answer. <laughs> okay. Otherwise, we'll have to have another tug of war. And we're going to place that one over the top of there. Now, what we're going to do, I'm going to put the microphone down in a minute, but we're going to tie a knot into these ropes to make sure they stay on the stick. Now, you need to hold that stick right up in the air like that. Okay. And you, if you can stand just there and hold those ropes for me. If you can come and stand just here and hold those ropes for me. Okay. Now, what I thought we'd start thinking about this morning is a little bit about um, the things that we do wrong. Okay. And I thought I would give us a bit of help in thinking about this. So I brought some, some little handkerchiefs. Okay. And they're all different colours. Okay. And we're going to think about, for each colour, something that, that this handkerchief might represent for the things that we do wrong. Okay, so we'll have this red one first. So uh, what do we think? What, what could the red, red handkerchief represent? A bad temper. Okay, we'll have that one. So what we're going to do, we're going to tie the bad temper onto our rope. Because uh, we all get bad tempers occasionally. <laughs> All the time, says Izzy. <laughs> okay, so uh, here's a bit more difficult. What about the blue one? What do we think the blue one might represent? 
Uh, yeah, you're already volunteering. Let somebody out there say, give us an answer. If not, I'll come to you in a minute. What do we think? The blue one. <laughs> telling lies. Okay, so we're going to tell, tie telling lies onto our rope. Okay, and a uh, bit easier one. What about the green one? Sorry? Jealousy. Okay, so we're going to tie jealousy onto our rope. There we go. And uh, what about this one? What about the yellow one? <laughs> Anybody? Go on then. Grief. Grief. Okay, yep. Yeah. <laughs> Not sure grief's something that we do wrong, but it's, it, it's something that... Uh, it, oh, it might make you angry, yes, I suppose there's that. But gr grief's a good, sometimes a good thing. But yeah, the, sometimes the things that come out of grief aren't good, are they? So uh, we'll do that one. What about the black one? <laughs> Go on then. Sin. Well, yeah, they're all sins. They're all things that we do wrong. So that can represent anything that we've not thought of so far is what we're saying. Okay, here we go. Everything else. Okay. And, uh, oh, hard one here. White one. What, might, what things that we do wrong might the white one represent? Go on then, Howard. Selfishness. Okay. Here we go. Now, you can see that, the, that this rope now, if this was our life, isn't beginning to look very brilliant, is it? We've got all this stuff here that we do wrong. Um, but actually, the Bible tells us that we can sort this out. We can deal with this. And that actually the day, way to deal with it is this way, look. Hold it up nice and high so people can see. It's, it's by, by bringing all of this stuff, all the stuff we've done wrong, and bringing it up to Jesus, who died on the cross. But actually, it, it's still there at the moment. Um, so we're going to do one more thing, okay? I want each of you, so you can just drop one of your ropes, not both of them. You don't matter which one. Oh, well done, you, you're caught up there. And we're going to tie another knot. Okay, and now what we're going to do, don't worry about it, we're going to make sure that the cross is lifted nice and high. So, so what I'm going to do... Don't step onto it just yet, I've just pulled the rope out there, put his hands. We're going to pull that out there, lift it up, step on the stuff. There we go. So it's now nice and high above all of this stuff that we do wrong. Now what I want you two to do is hold on really tight to the ropes, okay, and start to pull them. Give it a pull, pull, pull. And all of that stuff, when we bring it to Jesus on the cross, let go, let go, let go, is taken out of our lives and forgiven forever. Give these three a big round of applause. Come sit back down. Andy, I'll let you sort the mess out. <laughs> Looking forward to Nick's explanation of that later on. Be good. Thanks, Pete. That's great. You got another trick. <laughs> the, um, so you remember last last year we took part in the Arise Sheffield Prayer Walking um, initiative, I suppose. Not quite sure what you call it, but but they're doing the same this year, and we're going to be. Uh, in line with that, we're going to be prayer walking around the streets of the area, particularly around here, but maybe where you live as well. And there's a little video that we're going to watch together about it right now. Thanks, James.
something good is growing in Sheffield. Over a thousand believers from over 150 churches answered his call last year. New shoots took root. May our outdoor city be where earth and heaven meet. Arise, arise this March to pray for every single street. For the sake of our city, arise. Step out and prayer walk your area. Tap the app to mark down your route. See the map shine brighter with every blessing and watch the glow follow our boots. Followers of Jesus, arise! May the light of the world who burns in our hearts shine through as we pray to light up the dark. Whether you were born here or drawn here, arise! Let's set aside our barriers, blockers and stoppers. With God on our side, nothing can stop us. United in love, His power can flow through us. The whole city will know. They will know. Hopefully the weather is a bit more conducive to walking the streets and praying in Sheffield. But it's a great opportunity to get out there and start praying for the needs in the community uh, and to see God at work. And so we'll be joining that uh, next month. Okay, it's time to take up the offering now. If you're watching online, the instructions will come up on the screen. If you're here in the building, the, the bags will come round as, we, uh, as Chris leads us in our next song together. Thank you. Up a chosen generation that will march through the land. All of creation is longing for your unveiling of power. Would you release your anointing? Let this be the hour Let your glory fall in this room Let it go forth from here to the nations Let your fragrance rest in this place As we gather together Ruler of the nations The world has yet to see The full release of your promise The church in victory Thank you Lord To do us Lord and touch us 
Make us strong in your might. Overcome our weakness. That we may stand up and fight. Let your glory fall in this room. Let it go forth from here to the nations. Let your fragrance rest in this place. As we gather to seek your face. Let your kingdom come. Let your will be done. Let your will be done. Let us see honor. Let us see honor. The glory of your son. Let your kingdom come. Let your kingdom come. Let your kingdom come. Let your will be done. Let us see on earth the glory of your Son. Let your glory fall in this room. Let it go forth from here to the nations. Let your praise rest in this place as we gather to seek your face let your glory fall in this room let it go forth from here to the nation let your fragrance rest in this place as we gather to seek your face. As we gather to seek your face. As we gather to seek your Father, in this moment of quiet, Lord, we just ask that your glory would fall in this room. We've just seen a video, Lord, of wanting to see you rise up in this city, Lord. We just sung about you rising up in this nation, Father. Speak to us now, Lord, we pray, as we just wait on you for a few moments. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, O oh my soul, worship His holy name. Sing like never before, O oh my soul, I'll worship Your holy name. The sun comes up it's a new day dawning it's time to sing your song again whatever may pass and whatever lies before me let me be singing when the evening comes 
Bless the Lord, oh my soul, oh my soul. Worship His holy name. Sing like never before, oh my soul. I worship Your holy name. Rich in love and you're slow to anger. Your name is great and your heart is kind. For all your goodness I will keep on singing. Ten thousand reasons for my heart to find. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, oh my soul. Worship His holy name. Sing like never before, oh my soul. I worship Your holy name. My strength is failing The end draws near And my time has come Still my soul will sing Your praise unending Ten thousand years And then forever more Bless the Lord my soul, oh my soul, worship His holy name. Sing like never before, oh my soul, I worship Your holy name. And on that day when my strength is failing The end draws near and my time has come Still my soul will sing your praise unending Ten thousand years and then forevermore Bless the Lord, oh my soul, oh my soul, worship His holy name. Sing like never before, oh my soul, I worship Your holy name. Yes, I worship Your holy name. Yes, I worship your holy name. And isn't it for many of us this morning that our, our Father wants us to lean into Him? And what I mean by that is, just as we're worshipping and singing these songs, where you are, just start praying to Jesus and inviting Him in. I think. You know, we've seen the pictures this week of the storms that have been going on in this country. And we've seen, you know, wheelie bins flying through the air, and planes flying through the air, and all sorts of stuff going on. And for a lot of life, sometimes there's the thing around and things that are happening that we wish weren't happening, possibly. And, uh, and I just feel strongly this morning that Jesus is, and he's longing for you and for when we face through those storms. And the answer is end, like they have done in the, the week, literally. But the answer for you and for me is that we lean in and we discover Jesus at those storms of life. And that we discover that Jesus really is the anchor that holds us fast. And we discover that no matter what in our lives and that are impacting us, that He is true, that He is faithful. That his love 
will strengthen us and uphold us. And that his plan and his purpose for your life and for my life will happen. And, and is bright when we see him in an instant will be changed the trumpet sounds and the dead will then be raised By his power, never to perish again. Once only flesh, now clothed with immortality. Death has now been swallowed up in victory we will meet him in the air and then we will be like him for we will see him as he is oh yeah Then all hurt and pain will cease And we'll be with Him forever And in His glory we will live Oh yeah, oh yeah So Lift your eyes to the things as yet unseen that will remain now for all eternity. Though trouble's hard. It's only momentary And it's achieving Our future glory We will meet Him In the air And then we be like him for we will see him as he is oh yeah then all hurt and pain will cease and we'll be with him forever and in his glory we will live, oh yeah, oh yeah. Let's sing, lift your eyes. So lift your eyes to the things as yet unseen. But will remain now 
for all eternity. Thank you, Lord. Though trouble's hard, it's only momentary. And it's achieving our future glory. Thank you, Lord. We will meet Him in the air And then we will be like Him For we will see Him as He is Oh yeah Then all hurt and pain will cease and we'll be with him forever and in his glory we will live oh yeah oh yeah Jesus. then all hurt and pain will cease and we will be with him. We will live with him forever and ever and ever for eternity. And in his glory, nothing else, no other glory, nothing else in his glory, we will live forever. Thank you, Jesus. earthly tent we live in we have a building God <coughs> eternal house heaven not built meanwhile grown yeah. longing to be clothed with our heavenly dwelling because when we are clothed we will be found naked while we are in this tent we groan and are burdened because we do not wish to be unclothed, but to be clothed with our heavenly dwelling so that what is mortal may be swallowed up by life. Now it is God and us the Spirit guaranteeing what is to come. Then we are home in the body, we are away from the Lord. But we live by faith, not by sight. We are confident, I say, and would prefer to be away from the body and at home with the Lord. So we make it our goal to please Him, whether we are at home or away from it. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ that each one may receive what is due him for the things done in the body the good and Father we stand here this morning Lord we confess our lives are preoccupied by us our lives Lord are preoccupied by what us by what hurts us by what makes us sad and yet Jesus is a vision of something far, far greater. Jesus, here is a vision of something far beyond what we can ask or grasp or imagine. And Lord, as we look to you this morning, thank you, God. Up with something bigger than us. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. You brought us up with something in your heart, foundation of the world. Thank you, God. You brought us up with something that will be fulfilled when Jesus returns. And Lord, as we sing these songs and we bring our prayers to we say, God, come and move on our hearts. God, come and stir us again. God, come and blow on us again. We need you, Lord. We need your Holy Spirit. We are your people on this earth today and now.
your fragrance rest in this place as we gather to seek your face let your glory fall in this room let it go forth from here to the nations let your fragrance rest in Rest in this place. Rest in this place. So lift your eyes to the things as yet unseen and will remain now for all eternity. No troubles hard. It's only momentary And it's achieving our future glory So lift your eyes So lift your eyes To the things as yet unseen That will remain now for all eternity. Though trouble's hard, it's only momentary. And it's achieving. Our future glory We will meet Him in the air And then we will be like Him For we will see Him as He is Oh yeah Then all hurt and pain will cease And we'll be with Him forever And in His glory we will live Oh yeah We will meet Him in the air and then we will be like him for we will see him as he is oh yeah then all hurt and pain will cease and we'll be with him forever and in His glory we will live Oh yeah, oh yeah 
Father, we just thank you for your grace towards us. Thank you, Lord, for your love poured out upon us, even today, even now. Thank you, Lord, you walk amongst us and you don't condemn us. You pour out your forgiveness and your healing and your love. Lord, just as we stand and sit in your presence, Lord, we just want to say that we love you. And we say, come and have your way, Lord, in our hearts, in our lives, in our families, in our homes, in our streets, in our workplaces, in our neighbourhoods. Come and have your way, Lord, for there is no greater thing. Amen. 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 If, you, if, you'd li- <laughs> if you'd like to uh, take your seats, please. Um, uh, Roland, you may remember. Remember Roland? Okay. Yeah, we all remember Roland. That's, that's good. We haven't forgotten him. So uh, just in case we had forgotten him, he sent us a video of what they're getting up to in Zambia. For those that are guests, so, so Roland's gone to Zambia, and he's got kind of... There's, He's got a threefold thing going on. He's got, um, he's got a commercial interest, which is really what the video is a little bit about, explaining what he's doing. He's got a charity work going on there, and there's some church stuff. So he sent a video over for us so we can keep in touch, and we're just going to watch that now, and then Nick will come and speak to us. Hi, Roland here. You may be asking, what are we doing out in Zambia? Tribal, myself, and Ian. Well, uh, you're going to see some video of the college that we're building, University College, uh, down in Nsongwe, um, in the southern district, in the yeah, southern province of Zambia. And then uh, you're going to see uh, us meeting various people, uh, and it'll be self-explanatory who they are. But it's all to do with uh, the work that we're doing around the university. So enjoy. So, from one Zambian connection to another, Nick is going to come and speak. Let's just pray for Nick, can we, before he does that. Yeah, Father, we want to thank you um, 
for speaking to us already. And Lord, I want to pray, Holy Spirit, you'll be at work in our hearts. We pray for Nick, Lord, that you'll bless him uh, and doing good. And I just pray you'll just feel that flow of your Holy Spirit at work for him as he brings your word to us today. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you, Andy. Good morning. Good to see everybody. Thanks for braving the rain. And uh, Storm Eunice has passed, I think. Uh, Andy started the uh, service with us reading Psalm 34. One, it reminded me, every time I hear those verses, it reminded me of my first church. So the first church, I, one of the first churches I set foot in, and it's the one I ended up pastoring for about 11 years. And uh, right across the wall, they had that Psalm 34 one, let us exalt his name together. And uh, they showed me some... Ooh, hello. Is that... Uh, they showed me some uh, pictures of the old Nissan army hut that they used to meet in. And they had beams across the ceiling, and there, one on the, where the congregation could see, it said something like, I rejoice with those who said to me, let us go to the house of the Lord, something suitably uplifting. And then for the preacher, on the other side, it said, warn them from me. So, <laughs> so there you are. So be prepared. But we have also got a PowerPoint. I know. Um, it's the equivalent for me of, like, patting your head and rubbing your stomach and standing on a beach ball all at the same time. So I'm hoping that I'll be able to press the button at the right time. But just keep, just, uh, if, you, if, if I miss it, just go back over the video at the end. All right. So we're in Romans chapter 3, verse 21 to 31, following on from where Andy left off last week. I didn't bring my glasses, so I'm hoping that everything will be well. I'll read it uh, faithfully. 3, 21 to 31. But now, apart from the law... The righteousness of God has been made known, to which the law and the prophets testify. This righteousness is given through faith in Jesus Christ to all who believe. There is no difference between Jew and Gentile, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. And all are justified freely by his grace through the redemption that came by Christ Jesus. God presented Christ as a sacrifice of atonement through the shedding of his blood to be received by faith. He did this to demonstrate his righteousness because in his forbearance he had left sins committed beforehand unpunished. He did it to demonstrate his righteousness at the present time so as to be just and the one who justifies those who have faith in Jesus. Where then is boasting? It is excluded. Because of what law? The law that requires works? No, because of the law that requires faith. For we maintain that a person is justified by faith apart from the works of the law. Or is God the God of Jews only? Is he not the God of Gentiles too? Yes, of Gentiles too, since there is only one God who will justify the circumcised by faith and the uncircumcised through the same faith. Do we then nullify the law by this faith? Not at all. Rather, we uphold the law. Amen. We have got, for your delectation, a video. Now, I haven't embedded this in the PowerPoint. It's separate because last time I tried to put videos in a PowerPoint, it ruined Christmas for everybody. <laughs> so, James is going to play our video. 12, 11, 10, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, start, two, one. Boost ignition and lift off of the space shuttle Discovery, returning to the space station, paving the way for future missions beyond. Well, for that, we've got a little bit of nozzles to swivel, aiming the shuttle for its precise target in space for main engine cutoff.
There we go. I hope, hope everything is all right for you at home. The series on Romans, there's been um, perhaps more trepidation and hesitation about it than in most normal sermon series that we have. It's a, it's a big deal to take on Romans. It's a great, like we've said, a great manifesto of the gospel. And uh, it's quite a, a daunting one. Martin Lloyd-Jones, I think, took about 16 years or something to preach it. And uh, um, I'm not sure we're going to take that long. But, uh, you know, it really is a, a big thing to wrestle with. There are concepts that we have to go through, things that perhaps we thought we've understood, that we've, we've known about, we've had to rethink and go over and, and, and really sort of get the juice out of what Paul is saying through this letter. I know it's been tough for uh, those speaking, and perhaps it's taken, a, not that it doesn't take a lot of preparation normally, but perhaps considerably more preparation and more thought in order to get these messages uh, together and into digestible form. But it has been, I hope you found it, I found it inspiring and life-giving, and you find when you get into conversation and you're in your groups, there are things that just come up spontaneously. You think, what about this? And we, we go, go through it and chat through and chew over what the Scripture's all about. And there's nothing better than that for our growth, and that's why it's good that we've also got these journals as well where we can take our notes and, uh, and uh, what have you. So it's a slow walk through detailed concepts. Many times there seem to be opposite ideas held in tension. And in order to get the fullest possible understanding and interpretation of the text, we need to understand all seemingly contradictory concepts and hold them together at the same time. And the main thrust of the passages so far, up till this point, has been a little bit like a reality check on our condition before God. Here we go. Do I have to press? Oh, it's up. I didn't even have to press anything. Such a brilliant, brilliant service that we get here. The government talks of leveling up. Maybe you understand what that means. It's all about, you know, about bringing things to, to the same starting point. And this book of Romans does a tremendous amount for our leveling up. It takes away, like you said at the end of this passage, where then is boasting? There's, where then is judgment? We can't judge each other we can't, because whatever we judge somebody else for, we do the same things. So it brings us all to the same level before God. Some of the passages that we have read, Andy did such a, a brilliant job there, was it the second time in, you know, going through those, those long lists of, of the, you know, the condition of humanity, and it lists out sins and things like that, and we can, we can sort of take that as a checklist and say, ooh, you know, what, a, what terrible sins, and we look and throw stones out and say, look, look, the, look at the state of the world is in. But in actual fact, what he's doing is leveling us up and saying that whatever, whatever we see, whatever we observe, whatever we understand to be uh, a sin that is worthy of judgment before God, we are all guilty of the same things. We all stand condemned by the same measure. We all have, we are all in the same condition and situation before God. And so this book is full-throated about sin, about the wrath of God, about judgment, things that aren't very popular to speak about, not things that you hear a great deal about very often, but clearly absolutely fundamental and foundational in Paul's thinking. Chris Simpson put it a, a couple of weeks ago. He said we were, see, I've been listening. I'm quoting Andy. I'm quoting Chris. It's just, he said we sat, I hope I get it right. He sat down, in, we sat down in the doctor's surgery and he's delivering a diagnosis and the news is not good at all that we are in a hopeless condition. Whatever we try will do nothing to eradicate the fundamental problem. We know what's wrong. We know how things should be. We have a certain number of strategies that we might think of using to improve our situation, but the end result is always the same. Sin has won. Judgment is assured. I'm brilliant with PowerPoint, aren't I? Sin has won, judgment is assured, the situation is desperate. That's the sobering message we get from the first few passages and chapters of this letter. It's not good news, but we know the gospel is good news, so hold on to your seats. We're in a bad condition, all of us in the same boat. Even the Lord doesn't offer us any hope. It doesn't solve things. You would think if we could just get to grips with living how we should be living, then we could pull this situation around. 
we could get ourselves right before God. But in actual fact, he goes through, he said, the law holds no hope for us. All it does is tell us how bad we actually are. If we didn't have the law, we could comfort ourselves with the fact that, you know, well, we're just, you know, it's just how we are. But the law hold, held up against our lives shows us how hopeless we actually are because none of us can get anywhere close to fulfilling that or obeying that or doing what God wants of us. I remember when I was preaching once in an evangelistic situation and somebody said, I'm very interested in what you said, so if you could write down on the back of an envelope what I need to do uh, in order to live right before God, then I'll do it. And well, good luck with that. Because the law highlights, the rules highlight exactly what is wrong with us and makes us certain of our own sinfulness and our inability to help ourselves. And so the last verses of the passage that Andy spoke on last week sum it up, finally, saying no one, no one will be declared righteous in God's sight by the works of the law. Rather, through the law, we become conscious of our sin. That was the end of the passage. In other words, give up on the idea that you can ever satisfy God by your own acts of righteousness. That ship has certainly sailed, and we are just left awaiting our fate with no possibility of appeal, no possibility of parole. It's a done deal. We are condemned before the law. Now. But then we move on to my passage. See how I get the cheerful ones. But now. Do you like my little clip art things there? Little man with a trumpet. But now. Apart from the law. The righteousness of God has been made known, to which the law and the prophets testify. Having come to the end of the road, there is no further possibility of getting around the situation. We are in a hopeless state. We are left considering what will become of us. Then the gospel comes in. But now... But now, apart from, apart from the law, the righteousness of God has been made known to which the law and the prophets testify. A new opportunity, a new way, a new hope, a new, a new pathway is set out before us. And this is the message of the gospel that we have. That we are all in the same boat, we are all condemned, we are all hopeless. There's not, not a single one of us can ever claim to have any righteousness of our own. And so therefore there is only judgment ahead of us but now, a new way has been opened up before us. And this is where the glorious tension of Romans comes into play when we look at what God has given us through the gospel. We are used to a rules-based way of living. The way to live a productive and upright life is to follow the rules. So we are brought up to believe. If you follow the rules, you have nothing to fear. All the uproar about what's happening in government and all of that, you know, it's, it's to do with the fact that people think people should follow the rules. And of course, we're waiting for all the inquiries to find out what happened. But there is the, the, sense, of uncertain, the sense of unease is because we feel that rules should be followed in order to create an ordered society. So therefore, it makes perfect sense to believe that if we're able to keep to a set of rules and shape our lives and actions accordingly, then that should gain us some benefit. If we've got something to show for us, that it should, we should get some credit for being rule keepers, for being good people, for having some righteousness of our own. There should be some benefit in life, and in particular, some standing in the eyes of God. It can be a fundamental idea of what is good in a person's outlook and behavior can be understood in terms of our religious observance. If, I, if we are good people, if we go to church even when it's raining, if we give to the offering, if we pray, if we read the Bible, if we write notes when the preacher's preaching, if we do all of those things, there must be some benefit to us over and above the people that don't do those things. No offense to people at home. Surely all these things, when added together, must count for something, must gain some credit, must be worthy of recognition. 
And the sobering and wonderful answer that we get from all of these passages is we consider that and think, well, what, what, you know, surely I must get some credit for the good things that I've done. The resounding answer that comes through the Scripture is, no, you don't. You don't get anything for those things. Because now a righteousness apart from the law has been revealed. It's not connected to the law. It's not connected to our box ticking. It's not connected to our ability to live a righteous life. It is a righteousness completely separate from that. It's apart from that. It has been revealed. It has a different source, a different criteria, and has nothing to do with what we can do or what we can achieve by our own efforts or by our own strength. This righteousness, the Bible tells us, is given through faith in Jesus Christ to all who believe. Given to all. You say, oh yeah, but I, you know, I, we even say, don't we, oh, I, don't, I don't know if I have enough faith. Well, again, we're back to a righteousness connected to the law because if you have enough faith, you tick the box, you get the salvation. But what we're saying, we, this righteousness is given through faith in Jesus Christ to all who believe. Every human understanding of righteousness and reward is to do with earning. Righteousness is a personal virtue that sets you apart from other people based on what you have done or earned or achieved in life. But the gospel turns all that on its head and declares that in the middle of a desperate and hopeless world where there's no righteousness, no hope of change, a new righteousness from God is revealed to all. That's why the angels celebrate as a good news of great joy to all the people. A Savior is born. Good news of great joy in a hopeless world that cannot obey the law, that cannot please God, that cannot live up to his expectations or his standards. All have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. But all have justified freely by his grace. A new righteousness from God is revealed and is given to us through faith in Christ. The kingdom of heaven is open not to those with the highest scores, but to those who have the humility to trust in Christ and to allow him to give us what we need to stand confidently in the presence of God. He gives us what we need. He hands it to us and says, you're going to need this righteousness if you're going to get any further. And we have to accept it from him. It never comes because he says, I think I've been watching you and I'm really quite impressed, so I'm going to give you something that might help you get along. He says, I've been watching you and I'm not impressed. And so you're really going to need some help. <laughs> this is it. This is for you. This is your key to the kingdom of heaven. Oh. There is no difference between Jew and Gentile or between any of the arbitrary divisions that the world gives us, rich or poor, educated, uneducated, black or white, where we come from, what male or female, whatever, division we want to put in. And the world, as you know, is getting more and more divided as we go along. It seems to be how we identify ourselves. There's that phrase, identity politics. You know, you, we identify, I am this person, you are that person. There are labels on everybody's forehead. And you only have to say one thing once, that's it, you're labeled forever. And that's the, that is how you are judged. But there is no difference. Faith in Christ eradicates all the divisions, and puts us on the same footing regardless of our story or our background, regardless of our years of faithful service or our years of completely hedonistic rebellion. We are all on the same footing. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God, and all are justified freely by His grace through the redemption that came by Christ Jesus. The problem is the same. The solution is the same, no matter who you are. We can get stuck, can't we, as I've already said, in the first chapters, quietly ticking off the sins, like the Pharisees of Jesus' time, quietly thanking God that at least we're not like them. At least we're not like this person or that person or the other person. Not, you know, we, we comfort ourselves, well, I haven't got that in my record. Now, you might not have that in your record, but you've got plenty of other things in your record. It's always nice, isn't it, when you send off for those DBS checks and you come back, you know, nice and clear and you can sort of polish his nails and think, oh, you know, I've been a good lad. Nothing, nothing against my name. But when it comes to the records that God has, there's plenty against our name. But the solution is the same. But now, 
we can get stuck, like I said, in judge, and this is a repeat of the themes that have come week after week after week. But it's so important that we understand that this gospel that we have does not divide, but it unites. It brings everybody on the same basis, on the same level, that we, we, we gather together on the basis of our faith in Christ. Not that we stand in a pulpit or we stand in a church and we're able to sort of reach out and lift people up. We, all, we are all on the same level, all on the same level basis as we begin. There was a, a lady that I read a story about. I don't know if I've told the story here. I've told it in a few places, but I, I read her, her biography. My in-laws, Erica's mum and dad, were missionaries in Ghana for almost 20 years. But before they went to Ghana, they were scheduled to go to Zimbabwe or Rhodesia, I think, as it was then. And, um, and they were given 20 minutes to decide whether they would change their mind and go to Ghana. And uh, so they went to Ghana for 20 years after 20 minutes consideration. Um, but the people that went to Zimbabwe were uh, their classmates from the Elim College. And uh, some of you will know, some of you will know this story, that in the 70s, during the Rhodesian Civil War, um, there was a massacre, and the, all of these Elim missionaries were killed. Jeff knows that. Uh, and they were, they were the sort of babies, uh, children, uh, men and women, all of their classmates, they were, they were there. Now, there was one lady called Joy Bath who was a nurse in that group, and she was home on leave at the time that this thing happened. And she didn't, so she was spared. So she was the, I think, maybe, maybe there was somebody else who survived as well, but she was, she was certainly amongst the only survivors of that group. And uh, some, she went back to Zimbabwe, and she served for a number of years, and uh, she started to get ill at some point, and she didn't know why, and they had no idea what was wrong with her. And they went through a whole process of tests and things like that, and she found out that she actually had AIDS. And she had no idea how she uh, acquired this, but she could only assume. She said she used to wear open-toed sandals in the, in the operating theater, and there was, there was blood everywhere. And so she just assumed that there must have been some, some, contamin some way that she picked up uh, this virus um, while she was working. And, uh, and so she went through uh, um, a number of, I don't know how long it took, but she, was, she was, went through the, the whole process of suffering the effects of AIDS. And one of the things that she had to do in Salisbury, which in her hometown, was go to the hospital where she had to go to the, sexually, the sexual health clinic, the sexual transmitted disease clinic, where, and she had to sit with, with, um, with everybody that was part of that clinic. And she said it made her feel really uncomfortable um, because uh, of the way, you know, the, her, her upbringing and her outlook and her thinking and whatever. And she said, everything in me wanted to stand on a chair and say to all the people in the waiting room, I'm not like you. I didn't get this the way you got it. I didn't, you know, this is, this is, not, this is not me. I'm a, you know, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a missionary. I'm a this, I'm a that, I'm a the other. And she said, everything in me, that I just felt this sense of, of, of burning justice that I wanted people to know. And she said, and then in the middle of all my righteous anger and indignation, she said, I just heard the voice of God say, actually, you're exactly like everyone here. There's no difference. You have no right to stand on a chair and say anything to anybody because you're in the same position. That was what she had to, what she had to wrestle with. But I remember that story so clearly because it highlights to me the, the beautiful grace of God that we are all in the same boat. None of us have a, have a head start. We're not ahead of one another in the race. And we all come on the same basis and we all receive the same faith as a gift from God, the same righteousness that comes as a gift. Any righteousness that we have comes from Him. So we're going to come back to our space shuttle. You forgot about that, didn't you? That was uh, on, on the beginning. We showed the, the space shuttle launch. Getting from Earth into space, I'm going to give you a bit of a, because uh, I'm educated, give you a little bit of a lesson now. It's not a small issue. It really is rocket science. The force of gravity will constantly fight to bring your shuttle back to Earth. The peace and the beauty of Earth orbit are beyond the visible world and they're beyond the seemingly irresistible forces that would keep it earthbound. And so the journey is taken in stages. Are you following so far? It's quite technical. The solid rocket boosters attached to the side of that craft, they propel it upwards as far as they're able to take it. But in order for it to go on and to reach orbit, there's only so far they can go, and so they're jettisoned on the edge of space. 
and see them coming off there. To enable the shuttle to reach its goal. And our conventional rocket boosters, whether it's the law or whatever else we think is going to give us that credit before God, will only take us so far. It's not enough to take us where we need to be. It's not enough to take us into the fullness of the kingdom of heaven. It's a reminder of just how powerful the forces working against us are. And so at the point of putting our faith in Christ, we jettison the old way of thinking and cling only to him to take us into the kingdom of God. I'd love to think it was down to us, wouldn't we? And our rocket boosters. But it's as we let go of everything, our logic and our reasoning and our upbringing, and we cling only to faith in Christ that we know what it is to benefit from the gift, the gift of righteousness. We could never get ourselves there, but he takes us there by his own grace. What does it mean in practical terms? If you can see that, that's a quote by Hudson Taylor. When I cannot read, when I cannot think, when I cannot even pray, I can trust. We love to build credit in our own bank of righteousness, but often we know deep down, we know, we know deep down, I know deep down, how weak and frail our faith and our obedience actually is. We can give a good show of it to each other. We can give a good demonstration. We can, we can do all the right things, say all the right things, tick all the right boxes in terms of our public persona, our Facebook image. But we know what's behind the curtain, don't we? Our public performance gains us something in the eyes of ourselves, maybe of others, but we are seriously lacking in reality. We need to learn to trust God and his free gift of righteousness through faith in Christ and nothing else. In the first church I was part of, I mentioned it earlier, I had the let us exalt his name together on the wall. There was a very, very dear couple that played a hugely important and foundational role in my life. The gentleman was the treasurer of the church for about 45 years. Very quiet and unspectacular, but full of faith and encouragement for me. And so when I used to ask them how they were doing, um, they would say they were okay, but glad they were pitching their tents one day nearer to glory. In the course of time, the man David, he became sick and he died. His funeral was a very stirring occasion. I remember his funeral coming, his, funeral coming, his coffin being carried in to the congregation and the, everybody singing, Be Thou My Vision. It was just such a, a God-honoring event and a God-honoring life. Jesse, his wife, missed him greatly, but she used to get used to take issue with people when they say, oh, after so many years married, you must be devastated to lose David. And she said, no, no, no. How can a Christian be devastated when we have this hope? Then, of course, some years later, she became much frailer and she was living in a home. And it was clear that she was rapidly approaching that song we sang, you know, and when that day comes and my, what is it? Not my end is failing. My <laughs> strength is failing. <laughs> my end is coming. Yes, it. <laughs> No, I won't go there. But uh, she, uh, she was honest enough to say to me that she didn't know what she felt, thought or felt anymore. Her expectations of what it would mean to reach this point in her life weren't shaping up in her experience. She was nervous and for, probably for the first time she was a little bit uncertain about what she was facing. And she asked me what I thought and whether she had the necessary faith. And in that moment, I saw things clearly and said to her, this is exactly what grace is for. This is exactly what grace is about. It's not about having the right thoughts or feelings or, or outlook or having everything together and all your ducks in a row in order to, to, to sweep into glory on, you know, in, in, in a moment of, of wonderment. Perhaps it's even when, when all is stripped away, when even our feelings, even our thoughts, even our fears come to the surface and everything else, then we trust and he talked about leaning into God. That's where we lean on him, we hold on to him, and we say, Lord, it's grace that's brought me safe thus far, and grace will lead me home. Nothing to do with how we feel, or how we think, or what we do, or what checklist we carry with us. I think our transition to the kingdom of God is all about us. Even our attitude and our feelings and like I say, there comes a time when all is stripped away and we have to allow grace 
to carry us. And so I believe as we prayed together that day, it was as if her rocket boosters were jettisoned. All that she had lived by had got her so far, but it couldn't carry her where she wanted to be. And only the grace of God could do that. So even though she had that uncertainty, she had that frailty, she, had that, she was expressing those doubts, I have absolutely no doubt in my mind that she was rocketed into heaven when she died because it's not about what we carry with us. It's about who carries us. That's why we are justified by grace. I was away last week. I went to visit a friend in Wales um, and uh, yeah, managed to get under the barbed wire and everything and back out again. And uh, it, was, it, was, it was good to, good to be out and about. Now, I never, I don't usually, I'm not a music sort of person. You might be surprised. Uh, so. I appreciate yours, Chris. Uh, but I don't always, you know, if people say, oh, you know, I've always got to have music on. I never put it on. I was uh, sit in silence. Um, boring like that. <laughs> or listen to somebody talking, listen to Andy's sermons. Or... But... Uh, <laughs> Well, I was driving off. I'll listen to some music, and so I put it on Spotify, and uh, all of these uh, these songs started coming up. And one of them came up, uh, "Casting Crowns." You probably know it better than I do. Uh, "Beheld," and it was like it was it was just like the words were coming out. I wasn't even like, like concentrating on the words. But uh, I thought as I prepared this message and as I close, I came to to put those words down. Let me see if it comes up. Oh, look at that! Hold it all together. Everybody needs you strong. But life hits you out of nowhere and barely leaves you holding on. And when you're tired of fighting, chained by your control, there's freedom in surrender. Lay it down and let it go. So when you're on your knees and answers seem so far away, you're not alone. Stop holding on and just be held. Your world's not falling apart. It's falling into place. I'm on the throne. Stop holding on and just be held. If your eyes are on the storm, you'll wonder if I love you still. But if your eyes are on the cross, you know I always have and I always will. And not a tear is wasted. In time, you'll understand. I'm painting beauty with the ashes. Your life is in my hands. Come to me, find your rest in the arms of the God who won't let go. So when you're on your knees and answers seem so far away, you're not alone. Stop holding on and just be held. Your world's not falling apart. It's falling into place. I'm on the throne. Stop holding on and just be held. There we are. That's the end of it. There's so much that could worry us when you get into the first few chapters of Romans. You think it really does look bleak. But now, a righteousness apart from the law has been revealed. That is by faith from first to last. And we hold on and we hold on. And we, we, well, no, he says, don't be held. Anyway, I'm getting it all mixed up. It's poetry. Be held. I believe that there are, there's a word for, for people here, individuals, maybe for us all. To figure out what it means to adopt a situation of trust. Because if we have faith in God, Faith in Jesus Christ, everything is at our disposal. Everything is given to us freely. You know, we know the condition of our heart and our faith. We know what it's like to feel weak and uncertain, like that lady I mentioned. We could all identify with that, I'm sure, even if we don't give that impression. We know what it's like to, to, to wrestle with doubts and uncertainty. I'm not talking about people, you know, that, that I don't even understand all the, all the mechanics of, of, of how it works. But often, the people that worry most about their standing before God are those that do have faith in Christ, that are looking up to Him. But, and yet, we, we, we doubt ourselves because everything tells us that we need to be a better performer. We need to be in a better condition. And everything about the gospel tells us that it's nothing to do with that. And when you read the stories of the prodigal son who went as far away as he could and yet what he did was he turned his thoughts and his mind and his attention towards his father and said, I wonder if I go back whether he will make me a servant in his house. 
And when he actually went nervously back up the road towards his father, his father ran to him and embraced him and killed the fattened calf and threw a huge party because that was the nature of the grace of God. And we might feel uncomfortable with that because we think, well, you know, we, because we're stuck on what we earn and what, we, what we're able to do and we don't understand the, 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 the overabundant joy in the heart of the Father that comes from just our turning ourselves towards him. Not trying, you know, I'll come to you, Lord, and, and when I've sorted a few things out. I don't know about you, but there was times, you know, when we come to pray, sometimes our prayers, most of the time, I think God maybe gets bored with us. He, he's, like, he's like, oh, Lord, you know, I don't pray enough, and I don't pray much, and I know you probably don't want to help me, and you don't, you know, I'm not, you know, there's other people that you could help more than me, and, and perhaps, you, you know, you'd be better off listening to them. And in actual fact, I think I'm going to give up now. Amen. That was a quiet time. <laughs> but in actual fact... There is so much joy in the heart of God when we turn our hearts to Him. And we give up that idea that we've got to carry our special homework folder with all the stars on and the wallpaper on the front and all of that to impress God. Whatever your story, turn your face towards God today. And do you know the joy of not then having to go back through and unpick and un... You know, there's, there's a work that God's Holy Spirit does in us and he changes and transforms us over time. But it's not like we have to go back and unpick all the knots and, and, and smooth everything out and make ourselves presentable to him. It's just we turn ourselves towards him. And if you, you know, you could be, you could have drifted away from him completely in your heart. Your heart could be stone cold towards him. You could, have, you could be tied up in all sorts of things in your heart and your mind. And today it will just be that moment of turning your face towards him and there'll be that reuniting, that reunification, that joy of restoration, that hope for the future because it's nothing to do with what we present to him and everything to do with what he gives to us. And so as you do that, hear the words from the heart of the Father. Welcome home. You are safe. You are all right. It's going to be okay because it's all in his hands. If it was down to us, we would be utterly hopeless. But it's all in the hands of the Father. And he gives us his grace freely and abundantly and completely and overflowing and joyfully. What do you think of when you think of speaking to God? What do you think his face looks like when you speak to him? <laughs> well, there's a smile on his face. Laughter in his heart. The prodigal son, the father, he, you, don't, you don't run, gird up your, all your clothes, you know, your, your clothes and run down the street and embrace your son with a miserable look on your face. God loves you. God loves us. God loves us enough not to leave it to us to qualify ourselves to come into his presence. He loves us so much that he did it for us. Gave us his righteousness. Gave us his peace. Gave us the opportunity. Gave us the keys of the kingdom of heaven. And if your first inclination is, yeah, but, yeah, but, give all that up as well. Because today, the free gift of the grace of God is given to you. Amen. Nick, that's great. Uh, we're going to sing our last song um, in, a mo in a moment. It was just a couple of things that struck me when Nick was talking. There's one phrase he used in the middle. It's about who carries us. Who, who is carrying you this morning? Are you carrying you? Are you relying on other people? Or is Jesus the one who is carrying you? This only makes sense. Right? In fact, any of these last few messages only make sense if we come to Jesus. You know, and, and the repeated theme this morning is, yes, there's all this storm going around us in our lives, absolutely. And if we're fixated on trying to fix all of that and get rid of it, we're looking in the wrong place. Our eyes need to turn to Jesus and in faith reach out to Jesus and in humility 
Say, Lord, help me to trust you right now. And I want to invite you this morning, if you're in that place and you know you need to respond to Jesus, you know you need to say, you want to walk out of this building confident that Jesus is carrying you and no one else, then I want to invite you to come forward and we'd love to pray with you uh, to do that. Um, secondly, I also believe God might want to heal some people this morning. That's a statement of faith, isn't it? God might want to heal some people. Uh, but, uh, and if you want prayer this morning for healing, again, I want to encourage you as we sing this last song, please come forward. And again, we'd love to pray with you about that too. Thanks, Chris. Water you turn into wine Open the eyes of the blind There's no one like you None like you Into the darkness you shine out of the ashes we rise there's no one like you none like you our god is greater our god is stronger god you are higher than any other our god is healer Awesome in power, our God, our God, our God is greater, our God is greater, our God is stronger, God you are higher than any other, our God is healer, awesome in power, our God, our God. And if our God is for us, then who could ever stop us? And if our God is with us, then what could stand against? And if our God is for us, then who could ever stop us? And if our God is with us, then what could stand against? again our God is greater our God is stronger God you are higher than any other our God is healer awesome in power our God our God, our God, our God is greater, our God is stronger, God you are higher than any other, our God is healer, awesome in power, our God, our God, yes, our God is greater, our God is stronger, God you are higher than any other, our God is healer, awesome in power, our God, our God. Thank you Lord Jesus, we just want to look to you. And take on board Lord, what we've heard today. I want to pray, Father, for the church today, here, across your city, across this nation. Lord, that we would learn what it is to know that we're carried by you. That we would learn what it is, Lord, as we face the challenges and the issues of this life, that we would see, Jesus, something greater than our own lives at work. That we would see, Lord, what you are doing. We thank you, Lord, you've made a way. And I want to pray, Lord, each one of us would learn what it is to know that we are carried by you. Mm. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Uh, just a, a couple of practical things, actually, before I finish. Uh, I'm, I'm going to show you the grace. Uh, a reminder about the, the Roman sheets. Okay, please come and get one of these at the end if, if you'd like one of those. They are free. Uh, and also the Arise, the Arise initiative that I mentioned earlier. 
There is a introductory meeting next Saturday. Next Saturday, okay. And Steve's already sent an email out to everyone uh, about that. So just a reminder for that one. Okay, let's close our service today by saying the grace together. The words will appear on the screen. Lovely. Thank you very much. May the grace, May the grace of, of our Lord Jesus Christ, Christ the, the love of God, God and the, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. evermore. Amen. 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 Great to see you all. See you next week.